Are, are you okay to record or do you want me to? Oh, I already did. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Is your father in the We thank you so much for the break from the camp meeting to allow us to gather together, discuss health issues, and to talk about where we are on the lines. We pray that you will be with us, that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit and share light on our studies. There's a lot to, um, to contemplate, to reason through, and we ask uh, for your help, your guidance, that we may be walking in the correct direction. We thank you so much for being here with us. We thank you for this blessed Sabbath, and we thank you for um, the healing of um, Sister Elaine's body. And um, we praise you, Lord God. And we also like to keep in uh, prayer the um, all of a sudden the movement that um, just your guidance and your care. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So you are getting started answering um, the question? Or, um, so what was, um, Sister Susan, what is your question? Okay, so I'm struggling with like how to marry up the king of the north. I mean, excuse me, first the king of the south, like we knew it was um, France and Napoleon. But when he goes to Egypt and Egypt becomes the king of the south, is it Napoleon still the king of the south while he's in Egypt? Or does the power switch from Napoleon and he's no longer the king of the south? Or are there two King of the Souths, like Napoleon, France, still France, and then Egypt also? But I w don't know who's the leader of that. And then you've got Turkey as the King of the North, but there's two factions of Islam. And so it's hard for me. I, I'm trying to understand, like... Um, Anyway, you kind of, I guess you get the idea. I, I don't know if this helps because I'm with you, sister, but I, I, uh, Tab, Tabo, he was saying um, at that time. So whoever at that time, you know, whatever king is at that time, then it's that person. That's all I got from that. But that still doesn't, um, I, I still don't understand because Napoleon's in Egypt when he goes on that expedition. So is he, still the king of the south no. if you want i'll try to go through it right now with this okay scripture. that would be great um but uh, do you see the one that i'm rolling through right now or the other one that i put up first there's huh that it says weaken britain's access to india okay, okay. 10 years proxy so let me see so i can see it yeah yeah okay um first off there's what we're looking at is two different Fulfillments. And is that big enough, um, Sister Susan? I can pinch it on the iPhone here and um, try to make it bigger. Thank you. I can probably make it a little bit bigger here, too. I'll move that out of the way. Is that a little bit better? Yep. Nice. Thank okay. you. I, I don't want to go all the way to the slideshow because then I can pull up what I want on the left side if I could. Because we're not going to go through the notes. I just want to. I just want to try to explain that this is what Elder Parminder has been doing since um, Brazil Prophecy School in early 2019 when it started to open up and then he went into Tahiti and presented it a little bit more and then in Germany in a more condensed fashion. But what was understood is that all this time that we have believed that Uriah Smith was wrong about the King of the North but Uriah Smith copied Josiah Litch. And Josiah Litch is the one that gives us the, the prediction and um, fulfillment of the end of the, at the end of the, of, you know, of the first and second woes and the end of the second woe. And so what Uriah Smith did, which, which not Uriah Smith, which Josiah Litch did that Uriah Smith didn't do within Daniel of the Revelation, in the Revelation, is he combined Revelation 9 with Daniel 11, um, the verses in Daniel 11. 
And so, and when you look at Daniel and Revelation, the book itself, when you go to Daniel chapter 11, it's titled A Literal Prophecy. You go to that APEC document, and, it, and Josiah Litch says that it's a literal prophecy. So what he gave was the literal history of Daniel 40, 1140, using also Revelation 9. So it's actual history. And what it, that actual history does is then show us another line, another application, true application, the application we've been studying with the king of the south king of the south and the king of the north and back in that time as napoleon or france and the papacy josiah lich doesn't even use that that is a structure that has been built um, when there had to be a second time of the end if that's the best way to say that um, so the actual time of the end history of 1798 which ellen white says is that's the time at the end. There's only one given by her. This movement has built a structure of a second time at the end, if that part made sense. And in doing so, that changed the players. So both applications are correct. Um, theirs was correct for them for the fulfillment of Christ to return in their time. And he didn't. But however the Lord did it, it was done in a way that we could build the structure that the king of the north and the king of the south is the king of the north is the papacy with the army of the united states and the king of the south is uh napoleon so um and i might have said that wrong back in 1798 i'm kind of mixing the two of them up i apologize for that so then what started to be studied was the actual history and in that actual history and what just the Josiah Litch um, detailing out that actually actual history shows that that first of all the papacy isn't in any, any part of it and I think that was one of the things that Tabo he didn't I don't know if he said that if he did I missed it but he showed on the 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 um, on the board what he was writing is that the fulfillment or the removal of uh, the Pope was I believe it said in February and then this expedition begins in um in uh may i think it was so the papacy in josiah lich's um writings is not even a part of this so when you take daniel eleven forty back in that actual history his application is that the king of the south is egypt which is um the the it's part of the ottoman empire but being ruled by um, um, it's part of the Ottoman Empire, but it's kind of controlled by the Mamluks, which are kind of a radical part of Islam. And so that's Egypt, which is part of Islam. Okay. Then you have the King of the North, which he says Josiah Lich says is Syria, which at the time is ruled by Turkey, which also is the Ottoman Empire. So you have a struggle going on within the Ottoman Empire between two factions of Islam. Um, and then the him, he says, is France. So when he was saying that um, France, uh, if you went to the verse, the king of the south pushes at him, that's Egypt, that faction of the Mamelukes, the faction of Islam, is pushing against Napoleon because Napoleon has come down and he wants to take over Egypt. And, and, so he gets pushed against by the Mamelukes, but they don't succeed in getting rid of him. Then he continues his, his expedition um, up into Syria, and then the king of the north, Syria, that's the viceroy, I think is what they call him, um, he comes at Napoleon like a whirlwind. I think the British join him as well, um, and they come at, um, Napoleon as well, him, and push him back down into Egypt, and eventually then Napoleon goes back to France. So the whole story is telling us that, that um, you have this battle between the king of the north and the king of the south over Syria. 
which if you brought that to our time, you have this, and I have this one here, you have this battle over Syria between the king of the north and the king of the south. So this- Can you, sorry. Go ahead. So you just, I hope I can get this right. So you said that the king of the north and the king of the south have a battle over Syria. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. So who is, if the king of the north, because I'm looking at the little chart right now where the king of the south equals Egypt, king of the north equals Syria. Right. So if the king of the, who is the king of the north then that's battling over Syria? In our day, you mean? No, just in this app, in the straight, in the original right now. The king of the north? Josiah Litch names the king of the north as Syria. And Syria is part of the Ottoman Empire and ruled by Turkey. So they're, so, so Syria, so, ugh, I'm still struggling. So the king of the north is the Ottoman Empire in Syria? Uh, I don't know if I would say it. I don't know if you can Or it that is right. Islamic. They're just, they're just all part of the Ottoman Empire. And you've got Turkey and Egypt fighting over Syria. And Josiah Litch names the king of the north in, in, um, in Daniel 11, verse 40, which is this history, not this history, okay? Just in this history here, he names the king of the north as Syria because you have Napoleon going to Egypt, the king of the south, and then going on up the, on his expedition to Syria, the king of the north. And in, in this history here was just a couple of years time and the king of the south, Egypt, pushed at, um, when he came in to enter in Alexandria, he was pushed at by the king of the south or Egypt, but he was not pushed out. It was just a pushing, but not a defeat. But when you go to the second part of that verse, when the king of the north then pushes against him, France, Napoleon, he pushes at him like a whirlwind and pushes him out of Syria. And that process was literal history. That process, it created a vacuum, a power vacuum in Egypt that brought rise then to um, the Muhammad Ali Pasha of Egypt that over this period of time here, um, there were many different things going on. He was building his own power wanting to rise up and, and building his own power and he wanted Syria. So at, so this period here is what leads to these two factions, Turkey and Egypt, to eventually have this Syrian war fighting over the control of Syria. Because the Egypt, the Pasha of Egypt rises up more in power and more in strength and he's wanting, and he helps, he does his, fulfills his role from everything I understood it in doing what the Sultan, which is the head of the Ottoman Empire, asks him to do. And, and so that's going on in this history here. But all the while, what he wants is Syria. And during the Greek War of Independence, um, he, he helped him and his son helped in the Greek War of Independence. And it's in that, that war of independence that brought the Christian nations to come get involved and help Turkey to defeat Egypt, the king of the south. Did that help? That's the best explanation so far. It's sinking in, but I don't know if I could explain it back to anybody yet. But it's, I'm, it, you helped me a lot more. Thank okay. you. So, so the so what we're we've been working on is trying to then get the applications all. In. And Brother Itabo has a lot more of that, and we went through that some of that last week. His notes, um, he has a lot of that that he's working on. Um, but what you can see by this structure is that you have a time of the end and a time of the end, right? You have a ten-year proxy war over Syria that begins in 1831, ends in 1841. You have a ten-year proxy war. And, and here, what you have, based on the application that we know, is you have the United States, right? 
and you have um, and you have Russia. Um, and we've been reading a lot. Of, you shared with me a wonderful article, the one on the water port, <laughs> and uh, that that helped to better understand how going back in history, Russia has always wanted that control of the Mediterranean because they believe when you have control of the Mediterranean over the Mediterranean, you have you can. I don't remember if it said control the world. I don't remember the words it said, but that's where it makes you the superpower. And so that battle is still in the same place during these years. So taking that even forward, knowing that the, this 10 year war was fought in two periods, a two year war here, there was a six year break, and then they picked up again for a two year war here. And that's where you see going back to Josiah Litch's document, is that he's the one in 1838 made the prediction that the Ottoman Empire would collapse um, in, in, uh, in about two years. And then just 10 days before, he predicted it would be August 11th, 1840. And so when this was fulfilled, the great controversy tells us that it proved the methodology, right? And it gave an impetus, year principle. Yeah, and it gave an impetus to the work. So when you take that down here and you you take this structure of this 10 years, um, you have this 2019 here in 2021, which is Panium, and it's the end of the Syrian war. This will be the end. We know that that Russia loses its spheres of influence, and right in the middle of that, you have 2020, where FFA is making a prediction that that Islam is going to strike uh, Nashville with a nuclear bomb, where what this is telling us, the other thing that I didn't point out, is what, what did this cause for the Ottoman Empire? I said, what, how did I word it? Um, uh, the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. That was an incorrect way to say that. This was the restraint of Islam. So what should that tell us we should see here? Restrained. A restrained. And what is FFA saying? That it's going to happen. Yeah. So, um, so the other thing on that study that I was on a little bit last night, instead of watching the presentation from Wednesday, was people were asking the question, Elder Tess says that 2019 is the restraint of Islam, and Elder Harminder says that 2020 is the restraint of Islam. And uh, I wish I could remember everything how he said that, but it totally, I totally understood it. That when you follow the, the pattern of the King of the North and the King of the South here, and you and then you you come to this one here, we know that the king of, we know the battles where the king of the north wins and the king of the south wins, right? And when the king of the north won here, what happened with Islam after 1989? What did this what did this cause in Islam? Everybody's silent. Do you um, mean the rise? There you go. The rise of Islam. Was somebody else gonna say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say it's more like radicalization, but it's the same as rise. Yeah, so the so the when the king of the north wins you see a rise of Islam. So what do we see in 2019 when the King of the South won? Yeah, the rise, the Islam. Um, when the King of the South won, what happened? Does anybody remember what happened in 2019? Yeah, it's, Putin was, uh, there was an article how Putin was walking. Um, Not Putin, but Islam. Baghdadi? Wasn't he killed? Was Baghdadi killed? Yeah. Yeah. Remember in 2014, he stood up and proclaimed the caliphate, right? In Islamic State. And in 2019, he was killed, and that, that destroyed the caliphate. And that carries through, through this period of history, until we see the King of the North win, which this is a win. So you take that structure of a King of the North winning, that's a rise of Islam, 
the king of the south winning, that's a restraint. Then you have the king of the north winning. What should we see here? Arise. Arise. That's as far as I, I, I go, anyways, with my understanding. Anybody else? Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I appreciate it too, Elaine. For some reason, there's it's hard to retain it all. I understand that, and uh, but and sometimes I think I got it, and then I seem to forget what it is I thought I had. Look. Hang on one second. Let me um, check. Victor. I think for me, it's easier to remember when I actually read oh. that first, starting with the, you know the eleven. Uh, 30, 30, verse 36 is, uh, and going down, down to verse 36. Because the description of the, that description of that king is so graphic and it is so fitting one person that we all know. And uh, it is so almost literal that when, that, um, that at that time I thought to myself, this must be a, some kind of a, you know, it's it's a bad methodology because you know, can it be really literal? You know, it can't be because because it's talking about papacy. That's how I understood back then. But then <clears throat> when, uh, you know, one of the recent presentations, Elder Parminder started saying that, was it Michael Lieber, Michael Lieber, that he indicated that it's actually, that this whole, this chapter is literal and that king is literal, you know. And that that makes such a wonderful such a pre so it is so precise because if you actually read it it's so you know so easy to understand it becomes that uh when it when when god approaches the most critical part of the world uh part of the time part of uh, the most critical era right before the close of probation he goes in from symbolic he he goes he goes into um, to describe it literally to make sure that we all get it right. And just like it was applicable for Napoleon, it is so true because you can you remember that how Napoleon, you know, when he was being coronated or I mean crowned, so how he would, you know, um, uh, take the crown himself and crown it himself, uh, crown, put the crown on his own head. Uh, from the bishop's hands, and uh, just the same way you can see that this uh, that neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, not the, not the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. And you just see this magnif magnifying himself ab above all in uh, in um, you know, but but we also the the verse. Um, Thus, uh, verse 39, thus shall he do in the most strongholds in a strange, with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he talks about the God, God of forces. God of force. Oh, yeah, it's 38. But in this, in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. And you can see that just that by presentational that tells how how uh, people, what people like in Trump is that he is a forceful person. That he likes to be, he like he likes everything strong, yeah, and uh, and he's just magnifying himself, and uh, and uh, he admires people that rule by str by power and uh, authority. So I guess if you know, if I could put it that way, that it is probably easier to remember if you if you read that ver, you know those. Uh, that passage and and see that it's actually really talking about the king himself and yeah sorry took took too much no you're fine you did good lana thank you so this was one of um this was the the line that elder or brother itabo put out so anyway so but there are then the two applications, each telling us two lines, each telling us something different. Does that make sense? 
Yes. So you have the, the yes. fulfillment that we have always gone by, the papacy in France, um, which gives us the 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 lines that the structure of Daniel eleven forty that we've been always knowing, um, and that the king of the south pushes against the king of the north, and the king of the north pushes goes like a whirlwind against the king of the south, and that gives us different information. This opened up Islam and its fulfillment, and it it's really striking when you start then reading a lot of those documents, those um, articles on. Um, Russia and the the war for the mi war over the Middle East between the two superpowers, the war over the oil, and also those warm water ports. There was some interesting information in those documents. Um, but the but what we what this is telling us, what we've known is that the at Panium is the end of the ten year Syrian war, and and then like I was saying as well as what it's showing us is that when the king of the south wins. There's a restraint when the king of the north wins. There's a loosing. So you can look at 2014. Um, what battle? Does anybody remember the line with the battle of, of 2014? Because the 2014 is when he declared a caliphate, and and I don't think that uh, here's a whole other part to this. Bring in this, but I don't know that Elder or Brother Etabo's looked at this yet. But, but we, I've talked to him about it. I don't know if he's looked at it yet. But we have that that passage in the third cross he talks about the angry horse that's seeking to, to break loose um i I'm, I'm pretty sure i think he did say yes to this part that this was this was understood this way that in 2014 when baghdadi declared uh, a caliphate that that was the angry horse seeking to break loose um but then in 2019 that angry horse is restrained and that restraint is a period of time until the King of the North wins. And the King of the North is punished, just like back in, um, uh, this one doesn't have 2000, it doesn't have 1989 on it. Uh, let me see if I can go back to that real quick. Um, I don't remember if I, what I have it on. But in, in 1989, it would be, it would actually you'd have to go back to the World War, um, Three maybe studies um, in those notes. I can't remember other places too. But but um, what was I going to say? Totally lost that train of thought. I'm really sorry about that. I'm doing. You were better. talking about the restraints. I yeah, think. Talk about the restraints. Maybe the four holds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was one of the things. Thank you. Um, this is one point that I wanted to make. Is that um, Herminder has been also emphasizing. If for those that watch all of Portugal, is that 9/11? Um, he went through those passages in 9T pretty thoroughly, and showing that the passage on New York, the buildings in New York, and also in Nashville, are both describing the same event. And when you follow that through that passage, reading it carefully, that same event is when those two things happen. In that same event, he's proven is when there's no more mercy. So the 9-11 the, the, the is not, um, the strike at 9-11 is not a fulfillment of volume nine of the testimonies. It, it's, it's talking about the close of probation where there's no more mercy. And so what he laid out is that 9-11 was looking back a harbinger a harbinger that points not to the sunday law but to the close of probation based on reading 9t i'm probably i may be fumbling this but i think it's um uh, i think i got it pretty much understood but those two passages about nashville and the new york city are talking about the close of probation so you can take that passage and look and see it as a harbinger and it's pointing to the close of probation, which is not here. Um, so if 9-11 is a harbinger that, that points to the close of probation, my question is, and, and this is, I know I've pointed it out to, or sent it to, my question to Itabo, is that, um, well, what does that say about when does Islam strike again? So, and also, if you see the king of the north wins, 
and you have a rise of Islam, what does that say here? If the king of the north wins, is there an Islamic strike or do they rise? That's not answered. And then you can go back because I have questions about the hold, 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 hold four times. Could you repeat, uh, Sister Elaine, about the uh, 9-11 that you just said about um, how 9-11 is not a fulfillment, but it is a harbinger of the uh, close of probation. Okay. So can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do, I'll do my best. It, I guess it, it's just specifically that uh, small short of sentence where I just heard that 9-11 is not a fulfillment. Um, because we used to think that 9-11, isn't 9-11 the second angel comes down, yeah? Yes, we, yes. Is it, yeah. yes, that, that is true, the second angel comes down. Oh, yeah, 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 so I, I see. So did you mean that 9-11 is not a fulfillment of that uh, vision? Where yes. The yes, of the vision. Yeah, okay, uh -huh. thank you. Yeah. And so just like, just like when you have 1989, 1989 can't be found in the spirit of prophecy. 9-11 can't be found in the spirit of prophecy. They are, they are structures that, that, and I think that I'm pretty sure Elder Tess actually, she, I don't know if she said it that way. She, she, when she had the five way marks, she said, we're given these three. And I don't remember the words that she used. These three, meaning the Sunday law, uh, no, midnight. Um, no, Sunday Law, Midnight Cry, and close, oh, what was it? Second Advent, I'm sorry, Sunday Law. Close of Probation and Second Advent. Yeah, thank you. And, and so what we're not given was 1989 and, and 2000, 2001. And those are created by the structures and by parable teaching. So go ahead, Brother Victor or Sister Leanne. Um, can you explain again uh, why you have this way mark here, FFA July 18th with the dotted line. Can you explain that again, please? Okay. How, how long have you been with us? I just need to know how far I need to go back. Um, oh, um, I joined like what, 10 minutes ago or 15 okay. minutes ago. Because um, we went over this history here, the actual history in the Millerite history, and as Josiah Litch gave the, the fulfillment of Daniel 1140. Um, in this history, and there's a 10-year Syrian war. That 10-year Syrian war is broken into um, two sections, a two-year period here, then there's a break between it, and then, then there's a two-year period here. And in the middle of this two-year period, remember here at 1838 that Josiah Litch is making his prediction about the Ottoman Empire um, in about two years, right? And, and then 10 days before, he sets the date as August 11th, 1840. And when he does that, and then it's fulfilled right on time, it's a fulfillment of the prophecy, the end of the second woe, um, as he predicted, and the, um, the, um, the um, confirmation of the day-year principle or the methodology of study that allowed him to arrive at this date, and a wonderful impetus was given to the work. Um, and at this period of time, the Ottoman Empire was restrained. On August 11th, 1840, the, Auto the Ottoman Empire was restrained. It didn't completely, that's why I wanted to correct that I said collapse. It didn't completely collapse. That didn't happen until World War I. I believe it's World War I. Um, and, but it was restrained here when the Christian powers, um, when the Christian powers came in and the Sultan accepted the help of the Christian powers, which basically um left him without the power that he had had and and uh anyways so when you come down to our line and you have a 10-year proxy war here it it also can be this can also be seen in here too but this is not all completely determined there's a lot that goes on in here 2014 you have the caliphate stand up el baghdadi declare himself the, declare the caliphate okay but when you take this line here and you see a restraint of Islam and you go follow it down to the end of this Syrian war, this 10 year Syrian war, which ends here by a defeat of the King of the South, a win for the King of the North, 
then prior to that, in this history here, you should see a restraint of Islam. And we see that in 2019, when al-Baghdadi is killed and the caliphate is um, broken up and they're pushed out of uh, the, the, the Syria and I think they were in Iraq as well. They're pushed out of there. So this period of time here gives us a restraint of Islam. And were you here when we talked about the, the principle of the king of the north? When he wins, there's a loosing. And the king of the south, there's a restraint. Did you hear that part? Yes. Okay. Why, why is FFA here on this, on okay. this bottom line? So that's what I want to get to. Because if this line, this structure, and this line in this history is telling us there's a restraint, you have FFA who's saying the opposite. So if the methodology oh, okay. is proved here, then the methodology of the true prophet will be proved here. So they're involved somehow with their prediction that, that Nashville is going to be um, destroyed by a nuclear weapon by Islam. They're going to be proved a false prophet. The true methodology will be confirmed. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. So it was that last sentence that clarified it for me. Okay, thank you. I don't you. think I worded it that way last time. Sorry. So is everybody good on that? We can go back to the lines. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And we did post all these videos and uh, um, they're all up, all the ones that we did and you've all got the notes so you can go through them as you want as well. But it's definitely, it's teaching us, um, it's teaching us going forward what's happening. But I, I do still have a lot of questions when it comes to, like I was saying, when it comes to if 9-11 is the Arbiter that points to the close of probation, um, looking back and using that history, knowing that that volume nine of the testimonies is speaking of the close of probation when there's no more mercy, then that's telling us that um, if you if you put that next to 9-11, I don't remember how to say this. I don't I can't think how to say this. But if 9-11 is a harbinger of the close of probation, that destruction is, a, is, a, is describing the close of probation, and 9-11 is Islam doing it. We know that in Revelation 18, that that's Islam that goes in and destroys. So there's a lot of players involved, and we really need to understand these players. Because what I keep seeing, but I'm, I mean, I'll say it, but I don't know that it's completely accurate. It needs to be studied is that does Islam even strike or is that when we see the hold, 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 hold until the close of probation? And then you see Islam come in and destroy. So you see a rise of Islam, just like in 1989, you saw a rise of Islam that, that culminated in, in the strike on American soil. So in 2021, you see a rise of Islam with a strike on the close of probation. So. Isn't the rise, though, of Islam to allow us to, um, it gives, buys us time because the king of the north will have to be um, fighting against Islam or it's a distraction for the king of the north so that we can go forward with the message? I think so, yes, because they, they act as an umbrella to um, God's people doing the work. They act as, they are an umbrella that covers God's people um, and, or whether or not you want to call it, I think it's a distraction. I think that's the word they say. Be and it's interesting because there's so many things involved that I have thoughts in my mind that go on and on about this because they, um, you and I know we shared this before, um, particularly in 2 Chronicles 20, 21, 22, and 23, when you see what I think is marking at the Sunday law, um, that you start seeing um, Edom, Moab, and Ammon fighting against themselves, and God's people just go in and scoop up all the spoil. And, and you have that same scenario with Jonathan and his armor bearer when they go up to the Philistines where they don't ever even lift it, they don't even pick up a weapon, and the enemy destroys themselves. So that's what I'm kind of thinking is that based on these different things that that um, these different stories in the Bible, these different lines that that we're going to see these battles going on 
and fight they're fighting each other um well, I guess over what is happening with Islam. I don't know how I don't know how that all plays out, but they're they're fighting each other, which gives us the way to go forward and give the message. And then in the end, Islam comes and strikes and destroys everything. And and I don't know if that's accurate, but those are my thoughts. The other thing to think about um, is that in Acts 27, which when when do the winds blow? I'll just put it out that way and see who remembers what I'm talking about. When do the winds blow? Do you mean Eurocladon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good start. So describe the king of the north and the king of the south from what you can remember. The east wind at 9-11 time period. But what does the actual verse tell us about the king of the south? Or the east wind? Oh, no, not the king. Um, the south wind and the east wind. What does the what does Acts twenty seven tell us? Which one comes first? I thought it was the east wind. Uh, no. Uh uh. I don't have. I have to. Ugh. You have in Acts twenty seven. I'm I struggling. Have yeah, I don't have one of those here. The south wind blew first, soft, yeah. and it was favorable winds before this one, the Euryclidon, came that destroyed. So if you have that, you're gonna have, and this is this is when the south wind is blowing. I don't know how that fits in totally with here, but what it what it culminates, what happens here is what culminated in this. So you're gonna see the same thing happen here. So it's still, you know, a lot of work to do to figure out when does Islam strike. Can, Maybe can others already have it figured out and I don't understand it. Can I ask it, a question? Yeah. Um, so for 2020, July 18, earlier, like just moments, moments earlier, you said something along the line that there's going to be a hold on Islam. At that time, did I hear that correct? Do you know? Say that again. That did you say just minutes ago, moments ago, that there's a hold on Islam at 2020? FFA is saying yes. they're going to strike, but you're yes. saying there's a hold, so they're they're not going to really do anything, or are they? Uh, it, it represents a restraint on Islam. This, this is showing us here because in, in 1840, it was a restraint placed upon Islam and the Christian powers, um, the Christian powers took over. I don't know if the right, if the right word to say it, but they took I, over. So, so the Christian powers took over. Anyway, right. but it shows a, a restraint of Islam, which tells us that there's a restraint here of Islam. And we know that because in 2019 was when Baghdadi was killed and that the caliphate was broken up. Right. So an event has that to happen in order for them to be restrained. Just like at 9-11, an event had happened and then there was this war on terrorism and they were restrained. So something so is it because Baghdadi was killed in 2019 is is um is that why like that's not general really Suleiman was killed in 2019 and then that general was killed this year yeah, um, I think wasn't it I think 2019 or was it this year I can't remember now oh this year January 3 this year he was killed yeah so that was the restraint? Was that a restraint? The restraint is this starting here, but it's a period of time. It is a period of time because Elder Tess marks it at 2019 um, and Elder Parminder's marking it based on this structure and they're both correct by, by watching the interaction in the Middle East and the death of Baghdadi and then also the death of Suleiman. I don't know what else fits into that but it's a period of time where Islam is restrained. They're restrained while we're here now, being able to um, being able to do what we're doing and study and catch up with things. So there'll be nothing, like I think we already have determined there's nothing July 18, 2020. This is just part of their restraint, but FFA is saying the opposite, that they're it's gonna, yeah. 
so it's going to prove them a false prophet and the true prophet is remember because the midnight cry were lifted up right whatever that means because i know it's not supposed to be it's not a um you know as we're heading into very troublous times um beyond but the the true methodology is going to be validated whether or not that's just internal maybe that's just internal here it's but the true methodology is validated when their prophecy fails yeah so there the, that's the i think the key there with the last portion so the correct methodology will be revealed when their false prophecy doesn't come to pass yes okay that's the way i understand it anyways but it's not public for us yet so this is just god confirming to us that our methodology is correct not going to be confirming it to anyone else right it's not an external confirmation just for us i don't know that for sure because when you get to 2021 you're going to the levites and and so it's the methodology of parable teachings that opened all of this history up and all these studies that we have it's the method of um uh parable teaching and and we see here that that there was a wonderful impetus given to the work so that brought the work you know with, to rise up the, the the impetus to the work going forward with the, with the methodology being proved so the methodology is going to be proved and it should if i if we're following this i think it's correct um, that it should give a impetus to the work and i think it's in preparation for us to strengthen us and then in preparation as well to go to the levites and to show that FFA has the wrong, teaches the wrong methodology. Yeah. But when, remember when, am I on? Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Remember when Carmander at the IPR said that we only had five weeks back then to come up, to study this and come up with a prediction? Um, well, so are we still trying to, is that, I know that's why we're studying all this and, and Napoleon's Egyptian expedition and all that. So do you think we'll have a actual prediction ahead of July 18th? July 18th is in one week from now. I know, but December. I remember so Carmander saying the, that. This must be the prediction, although it is a false prediction. No. I don't mean their prediction. We were to study. He said for us to fast and yeah. study this because we only had five weeks until their prediction. So I was thinking that we were trying to understand to come up with a prediction because we'll also then have to have a true prediction. I just didn't know the time frame of it. Everyone's silent. Am I not clear? <laughs> so then we predict that they're wrong. <laughs> that's that's absolutely true. I remember Parminder saying that, but now we're learning here. I mean, maybe this is old news. I'm learning for the first time with Sister Elaine's presentation that this is from 2019 to 2020. This is the hold on Islam, or right because because Baghdadi was murdered, um, and then that general was murdered this year. So they don't have the power to um, do anything yet. And they're also allies with Russia, being the king of the south in that time's not yet until 2021, till Russia or Putin receives a deadly wound, if that ties into it at all. So, yeah, so my, my my thought is when you when you restrain i, I know <clears throat> elder tess said the 19 and elder prime minister said 20 this year but my idea of being restrained is they had to have uh, attempted to do something and then they are restrained from doing whatever uh, they attempted to do. So for example, let's say that, um, you know, let, let's just say uh, that 
FFA was partially right and they were going to, uh, Islam was going to nuke Nashville. But uh, the CIA uh, found out about this plot and kept them from doing this. So now they're restrained from doing whatever, you know, bombing Nashville. So to me, when, I, when you hear restrained, uh, I mean, like bin Laden was killed. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of great leaders that were killed throughout, you know, Islamic leaders. But I don't know, that to me is, doesn't sound like restraint. To me, like I said, restraint is when they're attempting to do something and then they're thwarted from doing it. They're restrained from doing it. That's how I see it. Sorry. So we, have, so we have, so to us, for us, just like Josiah Litch made a prediction. You know, we're like, you know, we, we can't, you know, we can't just say, no, FFA is wrong because everybody else saying FFA is wrong. I mean, you tell, you know, you go to an ethanum and you say, well, Nashville is going to bomb at, um, you know, uh, July 18th. And the CIA says, no, we have no such information. So to me, that's not restraining. Uh, and and just, just to dispute somebody is not restraining. We have, we have to come up with a prediction like Josiah Litch did said on such and such date, this is going to happen. To me, that's restraint. I don't know. I, I, I was just uh, in and out with talking with somebody that was asking questions for the next meeting on WhatsApp, so I apologize. But any comments to what he said? I missed part of it. I don't want to ask you to repeat it unless you want to. <laughs> I agree with Brother Fowl. If, uh, if there isn't a clear prediction and a clear attempt, then, and a restraining, then we can't say on a line that um, they were restrained because if they weren't doing anything, you can't restrain them. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so in so 2014, when they declare a caliphate and they're consuming up Syria, parts of Syria and Iraq and turning it all into radical um, Islamic rule, um, and then everybody joins in and pushes them out and eventually Baghdadi is dead. Are we saying that's not a restraint of Islam? We're questioning FFA being on the line for July 18th. Oh, I'm sorry. The only reason I put that there is just to highlight the fact that they're doing the exact opposite of what the line tells us is going to happen. If that makes sense. That's the only reason I put that there. Yeah, no, I mean, we're not, we're not against you. We're asking, um, we're, we're just um, trying to make sense because we don't want to um, go off in the wrong direction. Yeah, so, so, if, so the only reason that's placed there is just to demonstrate that the, that they are saying there's going to be a strike mm -hmm. and the lines teach us that they are restrained at this time. Right. So we're, we are saying, um, are we seeing something for real, not, not FFA saying, but is there something going on externally that we can actually point to that would say um, they're being restrained? Yeah, you mean on that line? Where yeah. Is. Yeah. Because we, because we know it has to happen because it has to match up. Right. So in reality, there has to be some something that's going to restrain Islam. They are restrained. They are restrained. They're restrained when Baghdadi was um, killed and the caliphate was stopped. They are restrained. We're in a period of time where they are restrained. Then maybe you should have that also down on that line then. I'm very sorry, guys. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was to point out, we went through this like a couple through the last few weeks. It was only to point out 
what they're saying versus what we're saying and showing that 1840 shows that there's a um, that there's a fulfillment of the pair of the of the method that proves the methodology and this methodology will be proved too so I don't have all the answers but that was the only reason but if it troubles everybody I'll remove it um, to me it seems like an important thing to note that they're going out there and saying same thing saying something that is happening when the line doesn't show that it happens here. It's not about whether or not there's a prediction and then it's restrained. They are restrained. We've missed the, the mist of this whole history when the caliphate, I mean, I think we knew about it, but to see it on this line when the caliphate rose up and declared a caliphate in 2014 in, and then it's destroyed in 2019, this is a period of restraint. So it can't, there can't be a strike in this period of time where there's a restraint. That's the best that I understand it. I'm not saying that I'm correct, but that was the only reason I put FFA's prediction on there because they're making a prediction in a, that, sh, that the lines teach us is a period of restraint. Gotcha, that helps, thank you. Does that help um, with you, Brother Victor and Brother Phil? Yes, it, it helps. It, the portion that made sense for me was you know, their prophecy not coming to fulfillment illustrates a false methodology. When in 1840, when the prediction came true, it demonstrated that their rules, were, their rules were confirmed as being valid. But when FFA prediction doesn't come true, their rules will be confirmed as being unvalid. So the only other option would be, you know, this movement our rules are valid and there it doesn't so it's you know it, it's a it's a good parallel but i also know that you know when the horse is seeking to break loose it's restrained so i would just leave it at you know their methodology confirmed as invalid that that's what that's the part that makes sense to me and the other thing to keep in mind is the, the thing that I mentioned earlier about when you see the king of the north win, you see the rise of Islam. When you see the king of the south win, you see the restraint of Islam. Yes. Again, when you see exactly. the king of the north win again, you'll see the rise of Islam. So yeah. all of that kind of tells us that this is a period of restraint of Islam. And then this begins a period of rise. Yes, that, that's a good thing. So, I didn't mean to be so confusing by no, not it, No, it's good, it's good. The <laughs> one E, sorry, I'm over talking somebody, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. The one E below the Nashville, that would have been the empowerment of the message in 1840, but doesn't pertain, right? Right, right. Was, okay, okay. Yeah. That's the only part I wasn't sure about why the one E was there. Yeah. Okay. It was just kind of copied over from the from the top line. So it may have been confusing, but it has uh, instigated a whole lot of conversation <laughs> to, to really solidify the ideas. So we've talked about it, and I, I think that was been, has been a good thing. So thank you. Okay, hey, ma'am. Okay. You, you know what else I've been confused about? Kind of, Brother Aaron kind of straightened it out with one of his chat texts. I think he did it yesterday because he was discussing the false, all the false predictions that FFA had made. Yeah. And one of them was that Panium, the Battle of Panium, would have the pandemic, right? And um, that had still remained in my brain from Jeff's teaching. I, I couldn't seem to understand why the coronavirus, is it a lead up to Panium? Because it's a, a pandemic, right? I, I still had some of that in my brain. And that he, Aaron was saying that now with our correct understanding and methodology with uh, Spanish flu on the line, right, in our, uh, I can't even think what line that is. Um, World War World War Three. Yeah, that that's the correct, that that shows the, the correct methodology because um, that 
pandemic lines up with our pandemic. And so again, uh, Jeff was wrong. Their, their predictions were wrong, saying that at Panium there would be a pandemic. It was the Treaty of Breslitok. Breslitok, yeah. how are you saying that? Breslitok, I and can't say it And that's where the Spanish flu came right then, uh, right after. And so I think it was right after. And, uh, and it lines up perfectly on World War, on World War III line, um, right where Rafia ended and right after Rafia ended, then you had the pandemic. And the yep. pandemic, I think the first case, the first um, notice of it beginning was um, November 19, maybe somebody remembers that date, but it was November, it was after November. Seven, 17, was 17. it 17? I know it was right in there somewhere. Yeah. So thank you. Are we done with this? Any other questions on this? I just wanted to make a comment that I really, it's, it sounds like a very nice extrapolation that you have made about the, uh, you know, that Islam, uh, you know, rising and restraining about uh, how in 1989, the rise, uh, uh, the rise from 1989 uh, led to 9-11 and restrain and, and restraining in 2011 and uh, how in 2021, this could be the beginning of the rise of Islam. <clears throat> and that could possibly, which is, you know, I, and I understand that you, uh, it's, you're uh, saying this is your opinion, and, but it, seemed, it makes a lot of sense to me that uh, 2021, some interesting things are going to happen. And it's not completely different from what the way I used to understand, you know, in my Adventist mindset, how the world, uh, the papacy would start back ruling, you know, we'll, we'll be back in the medieval ages and uh, and eventually Pope is going to, you know, issue a, a, <laughs> a death decree and, you know, it's, it's all completely, you know, uh, different. I mean, I'm not saying that papacy is not going to play because I don't know. They do play a role. And just, yeah. you know, I was not, um, if I sounded at all frustrated, I wasn't frustrated with anything anybody was saying. I had people yeah, texting me and it. asking it's questions not. on WhatsApp on the meetings at the same time. So I'm sorry about that. I was, I was uh, half hearing some of what was being said. So, um, so I wasn't really, I wasn't upset at all about, um, about this. I just was trying to explain it a little bit better. I did remember one of the points that somebody's question that I couldn't remember. It was something in that study last night that um, Brother Ritabo said is that um, the rise of Islam was against the king of the north because of their misbehaving in Iraq. Um, and so he's been looking into, and I started to read a few things last night about policy, foreign policy in Syria. And I found a couple of documents that I emailed myself that I was reading last night. So it's, it's, so the king of the, this rise of Islam is going to be against the king of the north for its misbehavior in the Middle East is what I got out of that part of that discussion. Yeah. So very interesting. And, and yeah, that's the part know, that I just really like. And if you read that article, I know, I know I probably read at least half of it. It was a huge one that was in the media post called the, what's it called? It started with a C. The, um, I sent it out an email just a little while yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. It was a big New York Times article. I can't remember the name, but, um, but it was it was talking about um, people in uh, Mosul um, mm -hmm. and and the all the all the when they you know when the caliphate was in there and under control and the way people's lives were it it, it gave it gave some other stories. I only read through the first main story. Um, and then it gave some other people, but how the United States has gone in there, they hit, were claiming to um, use such precision that they were not killing civilians and then admitted to, uh, you know, yes, there, there were a few citizens, I don't remember, 30 something that have been killed throughout this process. And so then somebody went in, this investigator went in to find that it, it uh, like, I think he went to like 120 different bombings. If anybody read it, they can clear me up if I'm wrong like 120 different um, places where these bombs were set off and they were finding that that the United States was actually responsible for a lot of civilian deaths um, in, in the trying to destroy the caliphate, which 
would make people angry when yeah you know what i'm saying so so that plays a role that article kind of plays a role in trying to understand the role of the united states or the king of the north in the middle east and what they're doing um in trying to spread democracy and, and everything else that they're trying to doing because that this what they did here gave rise to islam that resulted in, in being um or as he as he tabo put it for misbehaving in iraq um and then um that gave brought us this strike here so we need to watch what the united states is doing start studying and understanding what the united states is doing in the middle east that causes islam to come and strike yeah definitely it's a lot to look at I, I also just wanted to mention just now I heard you say something about that that you that that I uh, basically that you sounded frustrated or something like that I never said anything like that uh, it's probably this um, over the ear maybe the interference and we can hear things that are not said <laughs> oh, no. no I was so, worried that maybe I sounded no I just was worried that maybe I sounded like I was opposing you guys and was like, no I wasn't opposing anybody I I was just trying to monitor no. people asking questions it was, it, it was wonderful wonderful I very nice uh, I mean it's a very nice uh, uh, notion uh, remark that you have made because it really makes it clear about a little bit clearer about our views uh, in uh, regard to this Islam because the the rise and rise and restraining um, that the rise the uh, the, the twenty twenty one is if twenty twenty one is expected the, could it, possibly it I mean it makes sense but we just can't we just can keep going on and watch it you know and that's why we need to study these histories this war here and then also be looking at this this war here and look at the events and I have some of that we've gone been going through that. The, the events during this one and, and, and placing everything on the line. And we've been through some a lot of this and placing it on a line and no application, but just looking at the events. Because we know that in this history here, the increase of knowledge is on Islam. So that's what we're trying to um, pray about earnestly, whether or not we have some kind of increase of knowledge prior to July 18, which we're days away from um or or whether or not i mean i don't know if this is it i don't know if there's more to it but um i know that was the 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 prayer and the request that parminder elder parminder put out was for everybody to be earnestly praying for that uh for the increase of light on islam and and the understanding on this is there going to be did I misunderstand you again? I possibly I did because I stepped out for a minute. Um, 2021, that Islam would make a strike, but is it going to be on American soil if it does happen, or would it be off American soil but still? I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know if I. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I've explained that I think that I kind of question what when do they actually strike just based on um this line if anybody remembers the um this is important too this is why this other section of the of the study of the king of the north and the king of the south the daniel 1140 study if anybody remembers that where you have 1989 and 1991 you have the the deadly wound and then you have the death right and remember that she put the um the deadly wound and then the death at sunday law right the that deadly was, wound was at 2021 and the death was at Sunday Law, if you're talking about King of the South. Right. And so that also plays a role in trying to understand this as well. Because that will speak to us as well, is understanding um, the deadly wound and the death. And that all um, surrounds this issue of Islam as well. Thank you so much. That's good. I wish I could remember why all of a sudden, because I don't feel like I explained that and I lost that train of thought too. So, um, but anyways, that, that we need to understand the deadly wound and the death, what it looks like, and we need to understand the deadly wound and we'll be able, we should be able to understand the death. So we know that he loses his spheres of influence and then it's progressive, um, but his spheres of influence are what he wants in the Middle East. And, and some of those documents that I emailed out 
um, over the course of the last couple of weeks and put in WhatsApp show many different things about like with um, with Putin trying to be part of OPEC um, and trying to woo over um, the crown prince to his side and away from the United States. And some of those articles suggest that the best way I can relay what I remember reading in my words is that he bit off more than he could chew. And, um, and he's not able to handle um, all that he's brought upon himself. So they're in those articles that I've sent over the last couple of weeks. There have been a lot of really good articles to read to try to understand that what Putin has been doing in here that is going to bring about his demise. Okay, so now we can probably lay this one to rest, right? And we'll let um, Sister Christine, Christine pick up. I really appreciate what you just explained. Thank you. Yeah, I hope it didn't cause more confusion. I think it needed to be done, though. Like, we needed to have this discussion, I think. Yeah, and we need to go over it more and more. And um, again, like I said, those that, if, any, if even if we were here last week or the week before, the last few, they're all posted, all the ones that we've already done on it. And uh, um, there's another one that we're still going to work on, but it, I think we need to work on it anyways, but it kind of takes us all the way back to Muhammad and going through that history. And that history shows us the, the different factions of Islam from the very beginning. Well, I'm ready whenever you are, Sister Christine. Okay. All right. I'm going to so, walk away for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay. I am going to share my screen and the present um, the document that we used the other day. Okay, so can you all see this? Uh, oops, what happened? <laughs> Can you all see this document? It says uh, lines of different, a uh, list of different lines. Yeah, we can see. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so basically uh, on Wednesday, we were going through the lines and you can see through uh, by the, the red marks here that we went through the Acts, of tw uh, Acts 27, beginning of modern Israel, the 144 and the line of the priest. Uh, we were missing the end of ancient Israel line. Um, I, I only had a short amount of time to gather um, the lines together before the presentation. So I grabbed the ones I could find and um, we started going through those. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, right now I'm gonna show you how far we got and what our conclusions were. And then what I'm hoping is that you guys can add to it um, as we go through these lines what you remember from Elder Tess's presentation. So um, first off, we started with this line. And the reason why we started with this line is because all of the lines uh, have this pattern and we need to stick to the pattern, right? And so this was just to remind everybody that we need to remember this, this part of um, the line uh, to find out where we are. Uh, when we go and apply ourselves on the other lines and how those other lines are. So we've got, you know, of course, everybody knows you have the way marks, time of the end, 9-11, Sunday law, close of probation, and second advent with the different dispensations, plow, um, early rain, latter rain, and harvest. And it's just a reminder that when, um, it's important that uh, we don't... Um, um, mix up our uh, methodologies and when we look at these lines because they, they these can get cluttered right so these are uh, taken from board work and it's not always clear exactly okay where are the five way marks you know and and all that so when we're looking at these and we're trying to figure out ourselves on the lines we need to remember where those places are where those way marks are and so that way we we're putting ourselves in the, in the right place and so this was uh, Acts 27, and we've got the 
the Adramanium, line of the Adramanium and the Alexandra. And remember, uh, and, and Elder Tess reminded us that these are the lines of the institutions. And one of them is are there, uh, the US and SDA, right? So uh, there's a lot more to, to go over that part, but you can see by the red line. So these red lines are what were added on Wednesday. And this is where we concluded um, on Wednesday where we believed that we were. So here you can see clearly that this is between Raffia and Panium, right? And I'm, I probably have those in there too small. I'm sorry. Hopefully that's better. So um, here's, uh, okay, there's raffia and then there's panium. And so we put our line right in between here. And then here's panium right here. So we put our line there and um, we moved it this way because this is 9-11. So this is a bigger space in here than what you would have here. So this is between raffia and panium is this only uh, like a two year space, but between 9-11 and panium, but that's a, uh, 30 years minus 10 or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> so it's a bigger space. And so we put the line closer over right here. Um, do you have any questions on where we put it? And while we're here, let's talk about is when, when you guys saw Elder Tess's presentation uh, last night, does this seem to line up with what she was talking about? Um, I, I was having a hard time visualizing seeing her, her board work. It wasn't that clear on my computer. And so um, what do you think? I think she was, she was going through this uh, line of institutions and uh, it was like, she's, I think she, the main thing is that she said that she, she was trying to, rem, uh, to go over to remind ourselves where we are. Yeah, and so, and that's what we did on Wednesday, try to put ourselves where we thought we were. But do you remember, um, I know her lines were a lot simpler. Um, do these positions look approximately right to where, what she was putting on the board? Seems so to me. Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Do you, does anybody have any questions on where we put them? So um, obviously we're putting our line before Panium because we're not there yet. And after Raffia because we're past that. And um, let's see, I don't remember who all was there on Wednesday. I know Jonathan was, uh, and, and Brother Fell were uh, doing a lot of talking and helping. Brother Jonathan really understands the rules of, of the lines. And I really appreciate that because he reminds us, you know, don't mess up your, don't mix up your methodologies and make sure that, you know, you have your five way, mar way marks and because and, we, we can easily uh, get confused if we're, we're mixing things up. Anybody have any comments on this one? Discussion? Input. Um, I'm looking for another quote real quick for something else for you guys. But oh, okay. Yeah, this is good. Thank you. Um, so, um, when you were watching Elder Tessa's presentation, do these red marks look accurate to you? of where Elder Tess was putting it um, last night. Oh, did you add the red mark or did I put yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, so those red marks are what we added on right, on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Of where we believed um, in that group, the people who were, all, were there, uh, where we believed we were on these lines now, as of July yeah. 2020. And, and so that looks accurate to what um, you believe and what uh, Elder Tess uh, was putting on the board last night? Yeah, without, without like putting months and days in there, it's pretty close, it would seem like. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And you're, you're looking for a quote? 
I'll put it in the chat in just a minute, but it's it's going back to what we talked about previously. So go ahead. Okay. Let's see. So um, the next one was uh, I zoomed out a bit, but the next one was the end of ancient Israel, and I didn't gather that line yet. And some of this, you know, we'll we'll have to go back and add more stuff. So here's what we did on modern Israel. So we started with this line right here. This was modern Israel, right? And then as a group, we, um, we created the beginning of modern Israel and the end of modern Israel with our the basic five way marks, right? You Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Because I don't get any of it, but because of where, we're, you know, we're, um, how we're supposed to figure out where we're at. So each illustration, whether it's Acts or the ancient or the end of the ancient, the beginning of the ancient, and for a thousand of priests, stuff like that. So each one of those um, lines, right, what I just said. So we're somewhere, like in the beginning of modern Israel, we're somewhere on that line. That's what you're saying for each and every one of them. So it's not like we're a whole bunch of places on each. Right. Because that's right. what I was thinking at first. How, yeah. how am I going to know where I'm at? Well, what it is is to take all the different lines and to know what's happening, what has happened, and what happens at that particular point, and bringing all those things together. Every one of them brings us more and more understanding of what things should look like for us and what things are going to look like for us. Right. For me, it's like, okay, you know how when Jesus said that, you know, you'll see all these signs, and when, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Yeah. You know, and um, you've got the earthquakes and the famine and the pestilence and all that. Well, you have all these different things. Well, each one of these lines isn't representing one of those different things, but it's representing different things that are happening, right? And so it's not just one thing that we're looking for. It's like um, what what happened in the line of Napoleon, right? Well, you know what, uh, you know, and what happened with um, the Millerites, and. And so we're looking for all these different things. So each one of these lines, where we are on this line, is going to bring out something else that we should be seeing right now. Correct? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm not making myself clear. but And so when we find ourselves on the lines, we're, we're looking for what was going on in the history so we can see what should be going on right now. Correct. Kind of like how she laid, I really, I mean, I, I really loved how she laid out um, who holds the cord, that whole passage, because yeah. I, I've always, yeah. you know, had that passage. Um, we've done some studies on that passage before, never in putting it in such a systematic order, though. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So we know right where we're at in that passage. Um, you know, within the time of trouble. It was, it was a really good study. Exactly, yeah. So, so on these two, on these, um, so we have here the um, beginning of modern Israel, so that's the Millerite history, and what's below it is the um, fractal from this point to the second advent. So this is a fractal line, and this is the end of modern Israel, so that's ours, with this is the fractal. Right, and so this is the big line, and this is the 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 fractal, and this is the big line, and this is the fractal, and then this is where we believe we are on both the big line for the Millerites and that fractal line. So you can see that, like we're right here, we're um, not quite to the middle; we're just before Sunday Law, and for here, we're um, towards almost to the Second Advent because, um, right. So I'm not, I'm not explaining that very well, but <laughs> you can see right here, we're we between 2019 and 2021. And right here on the big line, we're before the Sunday Law. We got some comments. Well, I put that stuff in there just to follow up on it. Um, the okay. Siege of Vienna was uh, um, the time of Luther and the Diet of Spires. And Germany put a restraint on Islam in 1529, 
and 1529 to 2019 is the 490 that Elder Hess puts on the line. Well, So with everybody looking, um, do these lines, which we added on Wednesday, the red ones, do these look accurate to you? Is there anything that you think maybe should be moved a little bit this way or in a different spot? This is um, the Millerite history and this is our history. And you can see this is the line of the 144,000. This is the line of the fractal, the line of the priest. This is the Millerite history, and then their fractal. Looks good to me. I, I, I don't see, I, it's all right before the Sunday law, and one of them defines it even more so before the canium. Just yeah. on the bigger line, you wouldn't see, you know, you just would have more space there, you know what I mean? If you were to go on the bigger line, the fractal yeah. levels are quicker than the canteen. Any questions on that one? So that was the um, modern Israel, or on her list it was the um, the end of modern Israel. So, we, but we um, put them all, all together. Next, let's see, this one we didn't have. Oh wait, yes we did. This is the whoops, one hundred forty-four thousand. But we basically did one hundred forty-four thousand previously. Um, so it was right before between Raphia and Panium. Okay, and then this was the line of the priest. The same thing, we, we kind of did that already in the um, modern Israel. So right here. That might, have been, that might have been the last one we did. And so from here on, um, what we would want to do is figure out which ones we, what which ones we haven't covered. So um, I don't have the Diadochia Wars in this presentation or World War One, World War II. I have this one, which um, it came from a presentation called World War Three, which includes um, World War II, World War I think, and World War I, and Spanish, Spanish flu and COVID and um, how it all adds up. We also have this one, which is the internal external and um, let's see, it, it only came up to here. I added these because because um, we're pretty, we're further down on these lines than right here. Let's see, this one is the the revolutions, and I know that's what she's going to cover next. Isn't she going to cover revolutions next um, in our presentations tonight? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which is good because that was what I was, uh, remember we went through the yeah. last, and I yes. know we didn't go back through those, so I'm glad, because it'll be fresher in our minds since we did that. Exactly. So would you guys like to work on this one then? Yeah. Okay. So let me shrink it down just a little bit. Let me know if it gets too small. It's, um, there's a lot on here. So if it's- Yeah, it was a tough one to do. Yeah. Maybe we could just do one of the lines at a time. I can, um, Okay, let, let me show you, let me give you the big picture. So this is the big picture. It's too, it's kind of too tiny uh, for us to work on. So what we could do is uh, shrink it up and work on the French Revolution and then the German and then the Russian and then the French. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Okay. So let's go and, um, oops, turn. <laughs> okay. Back here. Yeah, this one was a uh, this one's difficult because it really takes up a lot of the, the page. But what do you do, right? It was so, a thing to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about this. Um, I to I told them that I'm like I told everybody on Wednesday. Um, I'm not very good at this, so uh, your input is going to be important, and. Um, I, I'm facilitating, but I'm not very good at theorizing and talking all this stuff out, the lines. So if anybody has any input, I am happy to hear it. Um, 
for sure we would have to be beyond this because this, uh, this line was showing where we were at that point and that was 2019 and we are like in 2021. So we would have to even extend this line, right? Yeah, there was, um, in, in the revolutions, in, in those notes, there was another, I don't remember which presentation, probably towards the end, I don't remember, but when she added, this was confusing to me, but she added the American Revolution um, next, to, next to, I think, next Don't to, go into the rock. <laughs> next to either the Civil War or next to, I think it was next to this one. Um, and, uh, Do you want pie and ice cream? Let me try to mute. Hang on one second. Do you want it? Are you going to eat it out there? Uh, wipe your face. There we go. <laughs> um, but she added the American Revolution, and and uh, I don't know if you have that one or if you if you if it's in this particular file. I don't remember. Um, I did not. No, I did not put it in this presentation. Okay, because then maybe that would help us in this particular one because it it uh, extends out from. I'm, I, you probably don't even see my pointer. If it's your pointer that you see, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, can yeah, you... it, it extended out after the French Revolution. I'll try to find it. You guys go on and I'll try to find it. I think okay. I had it open last night. Okay, let's see. Um, so I found it. Do you want it? Yeah, yeah. Can okay. you uh, put it in the chat? Oh, you want to do that? It's a whole, it's the whole. Or, thing. or you can um, no. Why don't you go ahead and share then? Okay, and and I'll send it to you, and then. Yes, please, because I'd I'd love to fill in, um, you know, keep working and adding to this this presentation. Put yeah. it all together. Well, I'll send you the PowerPoint. Fantastic. Then you then you can do that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Do you want me to share? Yes, please. Okay, and I'll send it to you right now as soon as I share screen. You talk, and I'll send it to you. I got my. Okay. Some of my cylinders firing, but uh, we still can't do too many things at once. <laughs> okay, see that? Awesome, yes. Okay, and I'll go email it to you right now and then you'll have it. So what are we looking at? We are looking at um, the 144,000 with the priests, Levites and Ethanons. And then she's added the French Revolution above it. And this would be the American Revolution, the Civil War. So that's awesome. Okay, so this is this is really good. Right. I just emailed it, so you should get it in any second. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, go ahead and zoom in on that. That is a great, um, a great. The um, the whole thing, zoom in on the whole thing, or just up at top. Um, yeah, just up at the, at least like the Civil War and the French Revolution, maybe the one hundred forty-four thousand. Oh, I navigated myself all out of where I was supposed to be. Sorry. Did you do that too? Never mind. That's good. <laughs> I'm not as good doing that in this, in this program. Okay. A little better? Um, go. Uh, yes, that's good. Um, I don't know if it's maybe a little bigger. A little bigger. Oops. wants to do it this way. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's good. Okay. So let's see. Um, here we are, right? It, I don't, it doesn't really seem to be changed that much. Um, maybe we can put the blue line over a tad and that's about it because this is where, I mean, we're still right here between raffia and panium, right? And lining all these lines up, this um, you've got 144,000 lined up at the 1989, and then bringing these all the way up through here. Where, um, so what happened in 1795? We start the counter revolution. You, you can see she has 2020 up here. Yeah. Oh, oh gotcha. Yeah. So that yeah. kind of lines you up here, so you know you're yeah. you know you're just to this side of that line. Exactly. So this, so this was the raffia line mm -hmm. here, uh, not on the priest, but this was the raffia here 
on these two anyways. And then this is I mean. Okay, so so I think I might be getting something. Um, so all we're looking at are the dates and where we are in between those dates. Because if we go over, say like if it's 21, 20, I mean, if it's 20, 21, then we know we're not there because we're not there yet. So it's right. before that. So somewhere we, right? right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's all it's about. Each okay. One these, each one of these lines gives us information on what was happening to then, you know, take it into our parable understanding for right. us. Okay. Well, I just got clarity. Thank the Lord. Okay. Thank so, you. Praise and so how are, how are we knowing that we can line up 1775, 1795 with um, 2020 right in here. How do we know that? Based on, huh? That was, another, know that? that was another study, and mm -hmm. I don't remember. Is that the one that was the shot heard around the world at Lexington? Maybe. I don't remember. It was in another study. It might have been in this study. Well, maybe it wasn't a study. Hang on one second. I mean, I know that there's a lot of studies that, that um, Elder Tess has done, and that's how she was lining things up. I think, I think it went into here, but does anybody remember off the top of their head or want to research where Concord and Lexington was, the shot heard around the world? That, I think that's, okay. I mean, yeah, my history is wrong. Okay. I'm, I'm a little bit, I just got to say I'm a little bit happier because um, I was, um, now, <laughs> what I'm figuring out. Just bear with me, okay, because I'm a mess. Um, so we find out where we're at, and then we also find out because where we're at, what went on. So where were we when this went on? Correct? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And, and what should be going on right now? And look at what we're looking at outside in, in the world. What is going on right now? Is there no, not... external and external. Yeah, externally, don't we have a counter-revolution going on right now in our world? Yes. And so it, it totally lines up. Yeah. Right? Can, I, can I ask a question too? Please. Um, so you were just a minute ago talking about Concord, Lexington, Lexington, and I don't think you mentioned Exodus though, right? You're just asking no, about... Yeah. Yeah, it is actually 1775. Uh, the shot heard around the world is a phrase that refers to the opening shot of the Battle of Concord on April 19, 1775, which began the American Revolutionary War. And that's where she placed 2020 at. Yeah, and that was Lexington, did you just say? Yeah, Lexington and Concord is what it's called, the Battle of Concord. But Concord, in Lexington, right. I think, is what it was. And for <laughs> us, it means on our line, this is the time period but it okay so 2019 november i'm just trying to work it out myself as well with us in the line um 2019 november 9 um and then right after that was uh concord or concord no not right after that but we're in the time period now of concord and lexington exeter is later it's still coming like next year Oops, I did it again. Sorry. Hang on one second because I have the slides with that on there. I just had a Is that a question or a statement, Sister Ali? I'm yeah, it's not a statement. It's just um kind of a, a sort of a working it out with a question because I I just understand that Concord, what it means, it's um it's in unity and we're coming into unity, and that's why it's easy for me to see it right now in unity, but I don't remember that the um character of lexington um it, it was totally something different but she put it on the place of concord let me so think, let me think it through. Right side. Boston, okay. yeah that's right she put it where you had boston Con boston concord and exeter you see my mouth right because it's me yeah. sure. boston concord and exeter so you have a boston we know that there's a boston concord and exeter in each of these lines i don't have that, that i don't want to try to find that one right now but but this lined up with Concord right here, um, where you had, if you would have Boston, Concord, Lexington, or I'm sorry, Boston, Concord, Exeter. Um, oh, it's for the Levites. Yeah, yeah. It was after yeah. 2019. And that's yeah. where she lines up that 20, that's where she lines up 1775 in the, in the um, American um, Revolutionary War. 
Okay, that's good. So that answers my I can't question. say that I understand that all thoroughly, but I hope that made sense. Way more sense. Thank you. And let me see if I can get us back to that screen without blasting us way far away. So do you think George Foreman could be the shot that was heard around the world? Uh, I hadn't thought about that. Floyd, you mean? Floyd. Yeah. What did I say, George yeah. Foreman? I think I did think about that at one point in time. Because mm -hmm. I think I did think about that at one time. I don't remember if we talked about it. Because I think I was asking somebody, is that what it was? I, I mean, because it seems somebody else was asking me too. You know, this doesn't this seem like the counter-revolution? Yeah, it, and, it seems and, like it to me. Adriana was talking about the counter-revolution probably being um, because one of the one of the lines of these revolutions shows us um, what was it? It's in the Germany or the Russian one. I can't remember. Um, I'll have to think on that. I'll have to think on that. But it shows us that uh, in the counter-revolution that oh in Germany I think it was that there's two. After the, yeah, after the Kaiser, okay, after the Kaiser, the German Revolution, after the Kaiser abdicates, and I can't remember the guy's name, he comes in to power, but then that's where you have the Spartacists, and you probably had that on your other study. That's where he has the Spartacists that are, so he's in this counter-revolution that builds in this Spartacist revolution, try, there are two factions vying for power, and Adriana had suggested that um, that, that would be What's his name? Bernie Sanders, um, because you had two two um, vying for power there to try to win back, and so I don't know. I've always kind of thought with the rebel that that, it, and I don't know if it's ever been said, but like what Sister Ali is suggesting is that that it has to do with what we're seeing—the riots and the revolution that's going on out there—and that the because the purpose in the revolutions, in the counter revolution, is to overturn the um, the system that just got put, the government that just got put in place. So in 2019, you have Trump as a dictator, and now you have this revolution against Trump. And, and we do know that the lines of the revolutions tell us in counter-revolutions that the counter-revolution fails. So they're doing all they can and we watch in the news and see how um, Trump is down in the way down in the polls and all kinds of problems and yet we know that he remains whether and I don't know if we know this or not I may I may not I may not understand all these things whether or not he's actually elected again or if he's elected and it's a rigged election or if he's he loses and doesn't leave office but the counter-revolution fails, and the purpose of the counter-revolution was to go against the government that just got put in, just got set up. And 2019 marks the dictate, the line of the, the, the spot of the dictator. We know he was elected in 2016, but um, 2019 marks the dictator in all these different lines. Um, Napoleon, Abraham Lincoln, um, trying to think of the other ones, but it marks the dictator. Are you guys there? Yes. 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 That was awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, um, what what do we know about this? I mean, we know that the revolution fails. Yeah, we know that there was a period of preparation here, um, a short period of preparation, and then you have the counter revolution, and and she marks 2020. I, you know, actually what we do see here is she's marking 2020 in 1775, then it would, no, we are in 2020. I'm sorry, lost my, where we're at. We are in 2020 already. There's so many dates. Sometimes it's hard to keep it all straight, <laughs> but we are in 2020. So we're in, so there was this period of preparation before you got to the counter revolution. And, and it's in this period of time, isn't it, where she marks the impeachment. 1868. Where did she mark 1868 at? Um, 2019, right? Yeah. Well, because that's where the impeachment was. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was 2019 that she 
because it started yeah. it started right after 2019 right after november 9 didn't it yeah and that's what we were talking about um or that's what she had been talking about so much in 2019 about the impeachment yeah. and the andrew jackson um, so the impeachment um you have an impeachment that went on before you had the counter-revolution i think that's I think that might be the, the fulfillment on that. Yeah. But I don't take my word for it. Okay. I'm a learner too. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So if I understand correctly, we're in the counter revolution. For some reason or other, I was in my mind thinking 2020-21 instead of 2020. But so we're in the counter revolution and I kind of yeah. knew that anyways. Yeah. Exactly. We are, and we can see it. It's, it's just amazing how we can see it unfold. Just like we should be able to see it. Um, we should be able to study the histories of these ends. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And know what's coming. And, and uh, yeah, and know what's coming. Yeah. What she did here was she stretched out the French Revolution and put it combined the Civil War. Which to me, this was a hard. This one, I, I this one was hard for me. Um, but I, I know some of the things of why she did it, but I don't remember how and all that. But she took the Civil War and lined it up with the um, American Revolutionary War. So you have Civil War and you have the American Revolutionary War, and then she stretched out the French Revolution. So on those other lines, what we saw was the French Revolution, you know, ending here with a dictator. And so she stretched it out. So she's putting this dictator here as well. If I if I'm seeing it correctly, because this was the this was the end of a uh, French Revolution. This is kind of like W uh, World War One plus World War Two equals World War Three kind of thing, where we had to uh, we started out with World War Two, but we had to go back to World War One to fill in all the blank spaces. Yeah. And so is that kind of what this what this is by filling in with the american revolution and I, I i don't know just looking at it if because these are lines that she did these were straight off of the lines that she did yeah and and i know that this one here was lexington from remembering it and marking it as the way mark of i'm pretty sure she marked it as the way mark of concord we just looked at that and uh um Concord come into agreement. Well, you know what? When they come into agreement, because what is this counter revolution about? But this that be my kind of question too is is that I mean when we're talking about revolution and counter revolution, now is a revolution that of the people against the government and then the counter revolution that of the government against the people, or uh, what is what? It was um, it was in looking at the bigger picture, it was the um, Republicans and the Democrats and the death, you know, the Republicans wanting the death of the establishment in the old ways and to bring in, in God we trust and all of that, that was all part of the revolution. The revolution was for them to overturn the Democrats and, and rule and finish the role that they want to finish in, in making this a Christian nation. And so then when you get to um, 2019, he's the He's a dictator, right? And then you wind up with, like as we said, a period of preparation. They were trying to impeach him. And then maybe um, Floyd was the shot heard around the world. I, 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 I think that came up in somebody, some of our discussions at some point. It sounded familiar when you said that. Um, and now we have, if you want to say conquered, because conquered is there's a unity, right? Haven't we seen a lot of whites coming up as to become a part of Black Lives Matter, supporting of Black Lives Matter, recognizing their own um, self, how we have wronged blacks in this nation all these years? Yes, definitely. I don't know if that's it, but I mean, there's definitely, they've come into Concord. They, they have. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Don't, don't, again, don't <laughs> say it right. It but, makes um, sense, though. I, I like that narrative. It totally makes sense. You, we see it every day on the news. Um, and even, um, no, I don't have enough information. Never mind. But um, 
Yeah. Whatever. So, and now they're they're countering against the government that is put in place and fighting to um, to try to get the election to not go towards Trump. But it fails. This counter revolution. It fails. It fails. Yeah. You have, what? Uh, you have more people. Trump has lost supporters through the, because COVID-19 is a whole other line, because yeah. COVID-19 has cost him. His issues on racism and immigration has, is costing him. So his supporters, it's, it's like, the best way I can understand it, from how I see it, is that as, as fruit begins to ripen, Let's say, you know, what we've all learned when it comes to racism and stuff over this, these past couple of years, um, we, have, we have all found, uh, I'll speak for myself, we find that we have um, some racist understanding and beliefs within our own selves and don't even know it. But when you come to a certain point and you start seeing something so black and white, not really mean, uh, yeah, literally, I guess, you see it so clear and so black and white then what's in your heart starts to come out. Do you really hate? Or do were you just ignorant? And those that really hate, really hate. And those that were ignorant seem to be being set free from their ignorance. Did that make sense? That's wisdom. Yeah. And and so that's costing Trump supporters that is a but we don't know what he's going to do, and maybe the lines are going to teach us what he's going to do between now and uh, November. November 6th, is it? Where it fails. So there's an event that marks it as a fail um, where he still wins at the end because he's supposed to be the last president. Yeah. So my question is, is are we then also a part of that counter-revolution to um, because, I mean, of equality? Well, what you have, well, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. And I, and, but you have always, because here's a whole other line, is the internal and the external. Because you have the internal and the external having the same issues. They're being tested on equality, and we've gone through our test on equality. And so... Um, so right now, the, the way I think, picture it in my head is that between the nation and then between the Democrat and Republican separately in themselves, and she kind of seemed to say something like this last night, the way I was picturing it, I've been picturing it in my head, is that the Levites and the, um, not the Levites, but the Democrats and the Republicans, you know, they're two divided sides. But within that division, you have people that are going to get on the right side of the issue and people that are going to be on the wrong side of the issue. And that's all leading into the Sunday law. I don't know if that made sense to what you were asking, but that's how I kind of picture it. Like all along the way, there's a, there's people being pulled out all along the way. Like the call out of Babylon. Right. So and that would be actually a different line then again. It wouldn't be uh, for us being involved in the counter-revolution. It would just be as an no, internal. No, for us actually to participate, is that what you mean? Yeah, because I mean, um, because we're taking a look at um, external events. In a sense, because it is dealing with equality, there is that um, decision that we have to make. So are we involved in that or is that just strictly... Now, as an external event where we're not involved, but rather um, an internal event, which also uh, requires a certain decision. She, she, I know that she laid out. Maybe somebody remembers it was just recent with these presentations. To sh she's been showing us the role of the priests during this time. What is our role as the priest during this time? And all of this activity that is going on is allowing and COVID nineteen has forced us into seclusion to where we're in that time period where um, the disciples were after the cross, the disciples still didn't understand things. And they were, um, Christ was instructing them and they were in explaining the, um, the, um, 
the things that he had already told them before he's explaining to them now. So that's the time period that we're in, and we're not involved in the counter-revolution or to be involved, if I understood it correctly. And that's how I that's how I felt about it anyways, but I think that's how she said it. Um, that our role is behind closed doors to better understand things because we need to be prepared to go to the Levites and to the Nephinims. And what anything what we've learned is that we've not had the message right ourselves. So the disciples didn't have the message right themselves. And this is our time that the disciples were getting the message clarified. Okay, the upper room experience. Yeah, so, and getting ready for um, Pentecost. So, um, so there are two separate things happening, the internal and the external. On the internal, we're in seclusion, forced into seclusion, and, um, and, and, learn, and having that experience, coming together, <clears throat> you know, sharing our confessing our faults and, and et cetera and coming into unity and having clarity on like where she was saying last night for anybody that was doing last night that um to be given clarity on the messages the message was that's why there's no new message that the the it's the message of what has already been taught that is being refined and clarified and that's just same as the disciples in that on that line Okay. <clears throat> so go ahead, Sister Christine. So I, I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, this was this was really good. Um, and this seems to be right where we are. Right where the blue line is is where we are right now. Right. Yeah, or maybe just a teeny bit past it. Right about. Yeah. There, yeah. Exactly, just a little bit to the right, and that's that's all we could do for that one. Um, I really appreciate that you had this in there, so thank you. And I'll I'll add that to the other presentation. I'll unshare, and I did email it to you, and then you share what you have next. Cool. Okay. Let's see. Um, I forget what I. <laughs> I think it's good stuff. Okay, so, oh, I do have one with the mark, oh, wait, okay, so, I did sort of have one with the American Revolution, okay, but it didn't, it didn't extend all the way, I didn't have all the information on it like you did, so I'm glad you have that, thanks. I think I went to the end, the last page. <laughs> oh, okay. Or and it then, might have been also in a different oh, place. No way. I just added that just now. <laughs> I'm high. Um, and that's it until I add some more. So I'm still missing the counterfeit. I don't have that either. I'm not good at that. Okay. So we could work on the internal, external. The, it, the one that I had was incomplete. So I... I, I don't really consider this as a complete one. And then this one was what I put in there for World War II, World War III, uh, World War I, World War II. I don't see anything. Oh, I'm still not sharing. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, we're good now. Okay, here. Okay, so basically, um, I've, we've covered everything that I have in my presentation. So I didn't have anything for um, Israel. We did go over the modern Israel. We went over 144. We went over the priest. I didn't have anything written in there for the Diodoki Wars because I would imagine that we would have to do one for each of the different four because I, I didn't find a line with, you know, just one, one line for all of the Diodoki Wars. Is there... Is there like one like that for just all four of them? Or would we do each of the Diadoki Wars separately, like with a line of pirates and stuff like that? And I would imagine that would be really good. Yeah, there was, because there's like one big line and then you put one on top of the other. Right, exactly. And I, I didn't have time to find that the other day. 
So we need to do, we need to get that information. If you we want, I can pull up a Diadoki or, or go on to what yeah. you can have. Yeah, that would be great. You do want me to? Um, well, let's talk about this. It's already 1.20 and we have to be back at 3. So when does everybody want to take lunch? Do you want to um, stop now, go to 1.30 or go to 2? Because we, um, the next presentation with um, Elder uh, Tess starts at 3 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Canadian. And the, oh, yeah. we should have at least an hour lunch. So uh, if anybody wants longer than an hour lunch, then um, that's fine with me. Yeah. So we need to stop at least by 2. So either now or 2. What is um, any comments? I'm going to look for that line real quick for you. OK. Oh, well, maybe I found one that might work. It has Macedonia, Italy, and World War II. Will that work for you? Macedonia, Italy, and World War II. Do you have that with the you dates? In it? Yeah, if you, if you have it with the dates. I, I only had the one where they like lined up underneath each other, but no dates on it. That one? Oh, beautiful. Yes. That's exactly okay. what Okay, yeah. so then you want it bigger, probably. I can pull it up in a regular slideshow. Doesn't that make it bigger when you do it that way? But then we can't, I'm not going to draw on it anyway. Right. Leave that for, since you're working on it, you can build it in the file you're working on. Okay. If you don't mind. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I appreciate that. I've been really awesome. enjoying digging into that other history. <laughs> <laughs> it's helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and you've helped us by uh, showing it to us. So let's see. Um, let's talk about this. Where would we be on this? Um, so let's find some some points. Uh, maybe you could um, make it a little bit bigger. Um, give me just a second. Um, what do we see that's lining up with us? Um, so we have the 10 years, Cold War. Here we go, Heraclea, Asculum, Beneventum. Wasn't, um, let me go up there. I don't want to mess it up. I get these confused unless I see that box where they're all together. Unless you see what? So boxes, because you have a canium is after Beneventum. Wasn't Beneventum Raphia, everybody? It's been a while. Uh, Beneventum is Panium, I thought. Yeah, Panium, it's the last war. Yeah, there's two different ones. Let me go back and look at this other one. So we would have to be before Beneventum, right? Well, I, I'm trying to remember because um, they were two different when you had, well, you had Raffia and uh, Raffia and Panium, right? Yeah, we need to know what Beneventum is. I think it, I think Beneventum was Panium. And 272, that's, um, no, wait a second. We need to think about this because Okay, we can look at it right here. Pyrus loses. That's Beneventum, right? Pyrus wins, Pyrus wins. Okay, Pyrus loses. Okay, that's that should be Panium, I think. Okay. Anybody else? It was either Sister Allie or Sister Susan said Panium is Beneventum. Beneventum is Panium. Sister Susan? Okay. Our brains are all text. <laughs> 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 There's so much stuff to remember. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking in the, in that area right before Beneventum. So, what does that? How did what? What information does that give us? Well, Heraclea, we know is 2018, right? Yeah. That's why I think we're kind of off because Heraclea was 2018, and Panium is what followed. It, because we're looking at different lines telling us different things of what you call raffia and panium. But Heraclea was definitely 2018, raffia was 2019, 
Okay, Asculum. Raffia was Asculum and then Beneventum. So we're between that. If you're looking at the Italy line, we're between 279 and 275. Yeah. And that's the history of Daniel 11, verse 12, right? 11, yeah, I think it's verse 12. And then if you take it to the line above then, then it's um, Demetrius, the king of the north. Demetrius invades Pyrrhus, and then you've got 287, Pyrrhus joins allies. So I, I don't know, but but uh, we should be in between there. At least I'm looking at the line of Italy, and these were all played by her. Um, so we should be looking at being in between prior to Beneventum. Yeah. Prior to 1945, prior to 287. Interesting, you see the Holocaust in there. I was just looking at that. I'm like, I wonder what that means, because that would put us right in there, in the Holocaust right there. That's interesting. What does that mean? Well, I think that's the persecution that, of uh, the black people and the different, uh, like, the Mexican people that have tried to come across the border and been separated, isn't that a persecuting time? Wasn't even that what was Hitler was doing be, be, yeah. even before the Jews? Yeah, yeah. if you're looking at the nationalism, right? The nationalism, ra uh, racism, sexism, and homophobia, you're looking at all that persecution going on. Yes, because yes, because they are starting to show that they want to persecute the by these new um, legal. Oh, I can't talk. I'm sorry. The the new things they just passed on the health of the transgender and right that would be uh, persecuting them. Yeah. Not to be able to have health care. Um, anyway. Wow, that's great. I mean, not not a good thing that it's happening, but it's great that we can see it on our line. Okay. Had to walk is, away. You okay? Yeah. So this is Brazil thirty. Do you have this one too? I'm, I've kept every one that you've ever done, so I'm sure I have it. Okay. I just have to remember where to find them. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's see, do we have one with uh, World War One and World War Two listed together? I have the one of World War Three that has them all. Do you want that? Sure. I probably have what you're talking about too, but I know right where to find the World War Three one. Except I can't find my screen here. Oh, there we go. I don't know what you guys are seeing or not. We are seeing you scroll through your you presentation. Are seeing that okay. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm trying to, there we go. Okay, let me just try to remember where it's at. You'll see how unorganized I am, okay? okay. If you can see all of this. <laughs> let me think, think, think. Uh, I, will say. I think it's in the Kenya. No, I know where it's at. What month did we do it? That I could not tell you. <laughs> I don't think it was there. Leave it together. You can put it also into the search bar on the top, right? World War Three, and then it'll probably bring yeah, up. I can do that. I know it's in the Kenya one. I just couldn't remember because I wind up saving them in multiple places and mix myself up. So hopefully this is the finished one. It actually looks like it is. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Is that kind of what you wanted? I don't know if that's what you wanted. Um, what I'm seeing is the the same picture that we were looking at before, with World War II, Italy, and Macedonia. Oh, there. Okay, with the brown ring around it. Yeah. See. Yeah. So. I don't know if that's the one you're looking for, actually. I'm not really sure. Um. Um. Let's go with this one. 
Yeah, because I think this was World War. I don't have it on there. This was World War One, right? But this isn't World War Three. This was the Third Badoki War up here. Okay. And then I think this is World War One. Yeah, it is Bosnian crisis. So I don't. I, I probably have one, but it take time to try to figure out which one it is to find. World War One, World War Two. You want to you want me to keep trying to find it? Um, I I don't have any other lines on mine, so uh, you would have to either take the time to go find more of them, or stop and take a break. We could probably break. I could use a break. Okay. Cool. Everybody else? How's everybody else? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I was just w uh, wondering if we could, when we uh, end our uh, meeting, if we could uh, pray, say a prayer for a friend of mine. She's, oh, she's like a proof that one, you know, like a, she's a lead, I, I believe she's a Levite because he's, he's fucked up and she, as she follows. You're cutting out, sister. You're fading. Talk, talk closer to the computer. Yeah. You no, you're faded out. Oh, there, there you are. So I just was wondering if we could uh, pray for Connie. Yes. I I believe she's a Levite because sometimes she's sharing with me the articles that Tess sends out on wow. the. <laughs> yes. Well, you, you can do the closing prayer if you want. Yeah, okay. okay. She okay. has, yeah, she has cancer, uh, leukemia, but uh, she's well, in, yeah, okay. <clears throat> when, whenever you're ready, uh, I guess I can. Whenever you are. Yeah, we're All ready. Right. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you so much for this camp meeting. Thank you so much for giving us, um, for giving us, for guiding us and sending us guide, um, sending us the help helpers, sending us to each other that we may walk together and that we may study together, that we may be, that we may uh, be in your fold. Your father, please uh, bless our elders, especially the ones that are presenting and to help us, give us wisdom to understand and give us uh, reasoning powers and give us help us sharpen our reasoning abilities that we may be able to re memorize uh, the most important parts that we are that is important for us for our salvation and for our work that we are to do dear father we wanted to uh, say um, thank you for and Sister Elaine, that she got over the problem that she has had and health issue, and that that you are you are so wonderful and so kind, and that you just you help the sister Christine as well uh, go over her surgery. With your father, we're especially praying for those of us that are sick, and those are of, our, of us that aren't yet in the in your fold, your Father. And we are especially praying for Sister Connie. We, you, we know that we, you have kept her alive for such a long time with leukemia. She has lived more than 20 years, but now she's getting worse, a father. But uh, we just wanted to thank you that she has lived to this moment, that you have given her all this healing and all this strength so throughout this time that she may be able to pass over the great, this great uh, test. No father. We're especially praying for 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 a relief that she, if you could give her relief and healing. However, whatever, however much that you would like to give her, however much that you that you would send to her, please send her, send her relief, send her healing, and send her comfort and peace in her heart. Oh Father, please also bless uh, again our elders and the ones that the presenters. And bless each one of us as we go go about um, for the rest of the Sabbath day, that we may uh, nourish ourselves and uh, bless the food 
if uh, any of us is going to partake, bless, bless it for our health that we may be able to um, to keep to uh, to keep the wonderful this wonderful this wonderful gift that you have given us the gift of health and health message. Oh Father, please be with us, each one of us, and we th we are thankful, thankful to you that you are that you that you have given us this opportunity to get together all throughout uh, throughout the world that we may be able to be with you and with each other. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.